All right, here we go, kicking off our next mini lecture. So as promised, um, we're going to take a quick review of some of the basic verb tenses. Um, so let's jump straight into it. We've got about 11 minutes to try to get through this and set you guys up for uh, one of your writing practice activities today. So first we've got our, uh, the most basic is what we call the present tense. And the, we're, when we're talking about verbs, we're always talking about the action because uh, verbs are action words or words of being. Um, so when you're talking about the present tense, this is used for actions that are happening in the present, right, that are happening now. Um, and also actions that are daily habits. Um, so let's check our examples. Um, he thinks about the learning check. Good, we know we have our learning check coming up tomorrow. And actually our main focus for today is going to be study and review. So this mini lecture on verbs is going to be the only um, concept new concepts that we bring out today everything else will be all of your other time should be focused on prepping for tomorrow um, so you can see that in the present tense for the third person voice the third person singular voice that's he she or it it's good to remember that he she or it always add s to the root verb. Good, so you can see that we've done that correctly um, here, he thinks. Now down below, um, this one is an example of a habit. Um, she brushes, and again we can see we've got that correct um, connection here, or this correct addition to the root form. This would be the this would be the root form. So in, in order to get the root form um, a verb's root is the, is the infinitive. You remember we've heard this before. Infinitive minus the two part. So you remember that all, all infinitive verbs are like to walk, to think, to be, to run and and essentially uh, this is what we call the infinitive and it's basically I the way I like to describe it is I compare it to a brand new product that you buy at the store that's still inside the box you haven't taken it out yet you haven't used it yet you can still return it to the store if you've got your receipt um, so it's untouched it's basically the the manufacturer's um, version of that product now the minute that we um, change it from the infinitive like in the present tense we we um, we take away the two and then we, if it's in the third person, he, she, or it, we're going to add the S. Um, that's what we do to make the present tense. So you might hear me talking about infinitive forms or root forms. So the root form is when we take this infinitive verb, but we just chop off the two. So we've basically taken it out of the box. Now we're going to do something with it. Okay. Um, so that's a little uh, investigation of the... Um, present tense. So we use it for now and we use it for everyday actions. Next we have the past tense. So this is used for uh, actions that happen in the past and we are going to mark this by adding ed to the end of the root verb, the verb root. So yeah, we take it out of the box, we remove the two from the infinitive and then we stick an ed on the end of it um, and then we're telling our readers this is something that happened before. Um, so example number one, they walked on the hillside. Um, example number two, she drove to Calgary uh, last spring. So this is why if you look at this verb here, it's what we call an irregular verb. Um, and there are lots of irregular verbs in English. And the way that you can tell, like uh, up here in the description of the past tense, I talked about how it's usually marked by an ed. And the reason I said usually is because we have these irregular verbs that take on their own unique form. There's quite a few of them. Um, even the verb to be, uh, it, 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 when we change it into the past tense, it doesn't follow an ed format. We don't say bead, right? We say was or were. Um, so that's another example of an irregular. And, and as we come across the irregulars, we just kind of put them into a special category in our mind and we remember, okay, they've got a special form for the past tense. Okay, next we've got the future tense and the future tense is used for actions that are going to happen 
or will happen in the future. Um, this tense is marked by adding uh, the extra verb will, or we call these auxiliary verbs. So they remember I've mentioned before that verbs can be complex. We can have multiple different parts of a verb. So three or four words we can actually make up that main verb or predicate. Um, so this tense is, uh, uh, is, is marked by adding will before that root uh, again. So our example, the scientists will travel. So there's that root form. There's our uh, extra auxiliary verb marking the future, will. Uh, the scientists will travel to Antarctica in the summer for their research. Okay, now things are good. So those are the three basics, present, past, and future. Now we're moving into uh, a little bit more uh, complex verbs. Um, so the first one is the present continuous um, tense, and this is used for actions that are in progress at the moment. Um, they are still happening. Okay, and we create this tense by using the verb to be that's the infinitive form right there. We need to put it into its present form, right? Just like here. And then we add ing to the root of the main verb. Um, the example, the dog was barking incessantly. It's happening now. It's still ongoing in that moment. Okay, good. That is the present continuous tense. Next, we're going to look at the present perfect tense. Okay, this tense is used for verbs that started in the past. Uh, but are still happening in the present. So they started somewhere earlier and they're ongoing, okay? Or we can use it for actions uh, that have started in the past and are finished, um, and are finished there, finished in the past, but they affect something that's going on in the present moment. So that's a little bit more complex, um, as I mentioned. So the format or the form for, for this type of uh, verb is we use the verb have, and then we add what we call the past participle. And the past participle is basically just um, the past version of the verb. But when we use it together with another element, we call it the past participle. Okay, uh, you'll hear this mentioned often. There's different types of participles, different types of words, because they're playing a different role in that sentence. That's why I always talk about the two Fs. We have to talk about form, but we also have to talk about function. So we have to look at the form. What does it look like? But we also have to look at the function. What is it doing? So if we see that past verb, we, we, we might just think, oh, it's a past tense. But if we look here, we can see this is a more complex structure. It's got two elements to it. So in this case, it's not just the simple past. It's, it's, it's acting as the past participle of this verb, okay? Um, so here's an example of that first um, case when it's something that started in the past um, but still happening in the future or in the present. Um, I have talked so much that my throat is sore. And then here's a second example. Example two, I have eaten all the roast, comma, so my brother was pissed at me. Okay, and so there we have the verb have, and then we've got the past participle form of the verb to eat, and you'll notice some of them are a little bit different, right? Some of them are not exactly the same as our basics, and that's again because we've already identified that there are some irregular verbs in the English language, right? So eat is another one of these irregular verbs. If we put eat into the past tense, we would say ate, and then the participle is eaten. So you have to, you have to learn that there are different um, changes that we make to these verbs so they fit into those different forms and functions. Okay, moving on. Uh, now we're looking at the past perfect tense. So this tense is started in the past and it ended in the past. So this is like the before before verb, okay? Um, and this tense is a little bit rare, but it is used to clearly show that an action happened even earlier, okay? And so the form, again, we're going to take the past tense form of the verb to have, so had, and then again we're going to add that past participle to it. So here are examples. He had taken off his hat, so that's the past participle of the verb to take, while on the bus, comma, so he lost it, okay? Example two, the great whites had devoured all of the whale carcass before the tourist boat arrived. Okay, final tense that we're looking at for today is the future perfect. So um, this is another of these rarer um, forms or rarer types of verbs. So it conv combines the future, uh, the future marker will with the past participle 
uh, of the main verb of, or of that, that verb that we originally wanted to use to convey the action. Um, and it is used for actions that you predict will be finished in the future. Kind of a brain tweaker there. So you're predicting something that's going to happen and it's going to end and you kind of know when it's going to end by, right? So if you think about sports events, th these would be a classic example, right? You could say the Canucks will, um, will have won their game by 10 p.m. tonight. So you're predicting the game is going to happen, you're predicting that, that they're going to win, and you're also predicting, hey, it's going to finish, right? They're not just going to go into overtime and play forever. We know that game's going to going to end at some point in time, okay? So it is used for actions that you predict will be finished in the future. And again, our uh, format for this, or our form, is we use will plus have plus the past participle. So again, you can see we're starting to stack these verbs together and it's becoming more and more complex. And so here is the entire uh, future perfect. There's my alarm telling me we've reached 11 minutes. So we're just about done. Everything looks perfect here. So we will have talked about our plans by 6 p.m. Or you could, I could say I will have finished this video within one minute. Okay. Um, so yes, and that's true. So your writing task for today, it's not going to be a big one, but I would like you to write two examples of each verb tense in a Word document, and I want you to include the tense that you think it is, or you should know because you can watch this video to see them clearly, right, um, beside the example in brackets. So if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so you need to come up with 14 sentences. So this means you will need at least 14 sentences to complete this practice assignment. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So good luck with that. And I look forward to receiving your emails with your example sentences in them.